The pineal gland is believed in many cultures to be the spiritual third eye responsible for intuition. Descartes called it the seat of the soul where mind and body meet. Each individual cell in our body receives an electromagnetic impulse from our central nervous system. They receive the very same impulse that was disseminated to every biological instrument from the earth. An explanation of our conscious universe has been attempted by religion, science, and philosophy. The neglect of biological nature from any organism causes illness. A divorce from nature, exile from Eden, confounding of tongues, they are all symptoms, not of a biblical God or deity, but the true self. The greatest and only threat to ourselves is a loss of self, the death of our divinity. As we barrel through history with oceans of information, yet barely a drop of wisdom, we have to understand how we lost ourself. In sacred texts and ancient scriptures left by our ancestors, we find an incredible link between stories of creation, a great flood, the war of the gods, the Messiah dying for the sins of man, end time prophecies, and similar characters. These correlations show up in myths from cultures that supposedly had no contact with one another due to distance in geography and time. Due to distance in geography and time. The common thread we find that connects all of mythology has its roots in the stars. One of the most revealing accounts is the battle of the gods in heaven and the ensuing flood. In the Bible, Lucifer rivaled the Lord and was defeated and cast down to earth. In the creation myth of the Enuma Elish, we find a similar story of Tiamat being defeated by Marduk and cast down to the abyss of Absu. And Chaos, Tiamat, the mother of them both, Absu and Tiamat's waters were mingled together. Meaning that the chaotic waters of Tiamat were somehow mixed with the sweet waters of Absu. Absu was the Samaro Akkadian god of the abyss beneath the earth. Tiamat, also known as Lucifer, was known as a serpent or dragon and was defeated by Marduk. Marduk was the father of Nebo or Mercury. And Mercury is the same mythological character as the Zoroastrian Mithra, the Egyptian Hermes Anubis, and the Gnostic Hermes Christos. The most recent version of Mercury, however, is the Archangel Michael in the Bible who defeated Lucifer and sent him to the abyss of the earth, or hell. This story is steeped in astrological significance in the Bible and in many other ancient scriptures. This leads to an event in history that is recorded by many researchers regarding the cosmic upheaval and historic deluge. William Commonus Beaumont states, The flood immortalizes the collision of a fallen planet later termed Satan, actually a cometary body with our Earth. Consider what this reveals. He postulates that a planet, later termed Satan, fell to the Earth creating the flood we see recorded in the Bible and other myths. Lucifer, or Tiamat, was a planet known to ancient cultures as the Glistening One, the dragon of chaotic salt waters. The light from the sun illuminated this planet's water, which gave it a glow that rivaled the sun's own light, which is where we hear about Lucifer rivaling the Lord. The Lord in this case being the sun, which sustains and gives warmth to the earth. The planet Tiamat, or Lucifer, was destroyed by a cataclysmic event that hurled the watery planet to the abyss of the earth. In the book of Enoch, it reveals, And behold, a star fell from heaven, and when it fell to earth, I saw how the earth was swallowed up in a great abyss. The myth of the Ute Indian states, The sun was shivered into a thousand fragments, which fell to earth causing a general conflagration. Then, Tawats fled before the destruction he had wrought. And as he fled, the burning earth consumed his feet, legs, body, hands, and arms, until at last, swollen with heat, the eyes of the god burst and tears gushed forth in a flood which spread over the earth, extinguishing the fire. This myth resembles the translation of the Enuma Elish by Stephanie Daly in her book Myth from Mesopotamia, 
which explains that Tiamat's eyes became the source of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. As written in the book of Revelations, and there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth. The Roman mythology of Ovid gives the story of Phaeton, which happens to be another name given to the watery planet Lucifer, or Tiamat. This story reveals that Phaeton was a child of the sun, and wished to become the sun for a day. Phaeton attempted this feat, and eventually, Jove, who is also known as Marduk, destroyed Phaeton, sending him crashing to the earth in flames, and put out by a tremendous flood of water from a river unseen before. The common theme we notice here is that of a saltwater planet, the great dragon, Lucifer, Tiamat, or Phaeton, was defeated and fell to the earth, and now dwells in the abyss known as Hell, giving us the outline of the story of Lucifer rising up against the Lord and being defeated and banished to rule the underworld. As we know, however, an outline is but a shell of a story. The inner meaning, the spirit of the myth comes with a deeper understanding of the essence of each planet, not just the physical planet, but the conscious core, because we know now that the proportions and velocity of a planet gives them their own characteristic frequencies which govern biological and behavioral patterns. These planets reflect the archetypal psychology of man. In ancient times, probably the most important field of research was the study of the heavens. Galactic bodies and their movement through the sky were known to be symbolic of the inner faculties within human consciousness. Within all organisms, outdated science has only explained the physical world measured by our five senses. Only in esoteric religions, mysticism, and quantum fields of science are we to find any attempt at explaining where thoughts and emotions fit into the sense-perceptible world. We also understand now that humanity is a community of cells within the organism of the Earth. The Earth, therefore, is a higher organism that shapes our form and function. This higher organism and all other planetary bodies are governed by consciousness, just as we individual humans are. And that it is time that world governments officially acknowledge Therefore, the Newtonian belief that galactic bodies are nothing more than lifeless forms floating in space is tantamount to claiming that we humans are nothing more than a composite of elements in motion. We know that this is untrue because we feel, we think, and furthermore we see the result of our consciousness creating what we call life. Plato wrote, This world is indeed a living being, endowed with a soul and intelligence a single visible living entity containing all other living entities, which by their nature are all related. Furthermore, the cosmos is a single living creature which contains all living creatures within it. And in an article out of the Sufi journal, the author writes, the world is a living spiritual being. This was understood by the ancient philosophers and the alchemists who referred to the spiritual essence of the world as the anima mundi, the soul of the world. In scriptures, we hear of the claim that angels guide the inner soulful actions of people, or that the gods wield influence over man. Most ancient spiritual and scientific teachings held the belief that the hierarchies of the gods, angels, archangels, archai, all the way down to the cherubim and the seraphim, are the hierarchies within the human psyche. In this way, we must understand that when the whole of ancient myths and sacred scriptures speak of spiritual influence from a higher being, they were speaking of archetypal forces that are inherent within us, not an influence from an external source. This is where we begin to see the relevance of astrology as an ancient form of science that resurfaced in the 19th and 20th centuries under the name of psychology. Friedrich Nietzsche even stated, as long as you still experience the stars as something above you, you still lack a viewpoint of knowledge. This is astro-psychology and maps the inner faculties of the psyche. In pre-Christian times, there were schools known today as the mystery schools or the mystery religions. 
The messages encoded in the scriptures and ancient archaeology came from adepts of spiritual science. The intent was to teach the initiates the deeper meaning of these myths. What became later termed as Lucifer, Satan, or the Devil was representative of the ego which rivals the Lord, the representative of the self. The true self is the epicenter of a person's entire being. It is the total sum of everything that we are. The false ego, on the other hand, is the idea and concept we create about ourselves in the course of our lives, which typically excludes any qualities we don't wish to accept about ourselves. However, humanity has been endowed with the freedom to choose either to obey the true self or to give in to the temptation of the vanity and materialism of the false ego. This is the most notable trait that separates man from animal. Our freedom of choice, the choice to follow our concepts and ideals, or our natural impulses, the choice to sustain nature, or to destroy it. This freedom of choice weighs on the fate of the entire organism that we call humanity. Cancer begins with a group of cells within a community that fail to communicate with the conscious signal of the organism. Those cells begin to grow out of control and spread to other areas of the organism. This very disease is evident in our world today. The cancer upon our earth is the domination of our false ego and our divorce from nature. Collectively, among every human, the cancer upon our earth is the domination of our false ego and our divorce from nature. Collectively, among every human, vanity leads to segregation and competition. Competition leads to fear and greed. Greed leads to deceit and immorality. And immorality is the breeding ground for illness, waging war on our earth. Every act of hatred and destructiveness in our world begins with self-hate and self-destructiveness. And it all begins with a breakdown in communication.